we got dear friends and family and supporters. But first off, I want to introduce my dear wife. That is Robin. Now Robin is my beautiful, smart, bright, intelligent, all-knowing wife. Yes, I plan on being married a lot longer than I plan on being in politics. But I am so fortunate to have my family here, my brothers and my sister, and also my friends and my supporters. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Would not have been able to do this campaign without you guys, and thank you. And let's keep working hard till Tuesday night when the polls close. Well, it's apparent from listening to my opponent's speech a few moments ago, he's pretty angry. I guess he's angry that I had the nerve to tell the voters the truth. That's the truth about his record in comparison to my record. And there is a difference between the two. And here's two quick facts for you. Fact number one. I was proud to be one of the first Mississippi public officials to endorse Donald Trump in when he ran for president. At the same time, my opponent was one of the largest donors to a political organization that tried to steal the Republican nomination from Donald Trump at the Republican National Convention. That is a fact. Fact number two. My opponent voted for the largest corporate bailout in the history of Mississippi, a billion-dollar bailout that has gone to one of the largest public utilities in this country. I stood by the ratepayers. I stood up to the utility companies, and I said no to billions of dollars of cost, that being the Kemper County Power Plant. says those are lies. He only wishes that it was not the truth. But now listen, I had no intention whatsoever of correcting my opponent's comments. But after listening to all of his attacks, I felt I had no choice but to respond. Now let me tell you what I want to talk to you about today. It's why I love Mississippi and why I'm running for Secretary of State. I grew up in Waynesboro, Mississippi. My mother worked in the lunchroom, drove a school bus. My dad worked in the oil fields. I myself worked in pipeline construction. Yes, I dug ditches for a living. I learned how to weld pipe. I've roughnecked on drilling rigs. Let me tell you why they call it roughnecking. It is rough manual physical labor, and I did it. The life changed. I became a CPA, opened up my CPA office. I started off with mom and pop businesses for clients. After years of hard work and growth, I had some large business clients. I want you to think about that for just a second. Where else but America can you start off digging ditches and end up sitting at the table helping make major business decisions? America is the greatest country in the world. stories and many of us in the oil industry. Many major oil companies down there are headquarters in Houston, Texas. And they have operations throughout the world. I was at a meeting with one of the vice presidents of the company and I was telling who I was and what I was doing. And he said, oh yes, you are one of the 601 boys. Now he was making reference to the area code 601. He continued on, as he said. You know, if we get an application here in this office and it's got the area code 601 on it, we almost go ahead and offer them a job just based on that fact. Because this company knows people from Mississippi, they have the work ethic to do the job. They have the knowledge to do the job. And we can depend on that people from Mississippi to get the job done. And that's a great success story from the state of Mississippi. Well, I am proud of Mississippi. We did a video and we shared it. The title of it is Why I Love Mississippi. It has received over 140,000 views. So I know many of you share my love of the state of Mississippi. And you can view it at samwritten.com, by the way. We have much to be proud of here in Mississippi, but we have much more work to do in the future. 
Now I want to talk to you about a couple of things that I want to do when you become Secretary of State. One is elections. I will work with the local officials to ensure that the elections are fair and secure. And voter ID needs to remain in place. Second is public lands, 16th section land. We'll need to work to continue to ensure that the fair value of 16th section land continues to be received by the school systems. And it needs to be fair to all concerned. Next, the economy. We need to get Mississippi off the bottom. We have been on the bottom so long, we think we belong there. We need to start looking at the facts and start thinking about them in a new way. The facts tell us that Mississippi has the resources. Mississippi has the people. And research shows with the right policies, economies grow. Now policies such as tax structure, business regulation, legal judicial system, personal property rights. We control those things, so we can control the direction we go. Here's another fact. If Mississippi economy grows at 2%, approximately 2% a year for 20 years, Mississippi's personal income will equal the national average. That is so vitally important and what it leads. And we need leaders that have a vision for our future. And they'll work to set goals to achieve this vision. And I believe you get what you focus on. I believe you get what you work for. And I believe that you get what you measure. Therefore, I believe that Mississippi, as a state, should set a goal. And that goal is that Mississippi's personal income should meet the national average. And that should be accomplished in 20 years. It can be done. What have we got to lose if we don't try? Think of the benefits. We'll have money for roads. We'll have money for bridges. We'll have money for education. Individuals will have jobs and a better life. Most importantly, we will have opportunity. We all know somebody in this state that left because of lack of opportunity. We do not want the children of Mississippi leaving this state looking for opportunity. We need to create that opportunity right now here in the state of Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi has many great success stories, but too often we tell our bad stories, and we do have them. Mississippi's future is yet to be written. It will be what we make it to be. It is up to us. The responsibility is on us. And I want you to think about that word for just a second, responsibility. It's made up of two words, response and ability. We all have ability. The only question is, how do we respond with the ability that we have? Well, in conclusion, when you look, it's all up to us. And I want to be your next Secretary of State. And I very much need your support and your prayers and your vote. There is so much success in this state of Mississippi, and it's all up to us. Please, elect me as your Secretary of State because I bring a vision to actually accomplish something. I'm not looking for another job. I'm looking to help change the state of Mississippi for the better of the future. And with that, that's about it. That's who I am, and that's what I'll do. Thank you so much.